Hello, in this video I will demonstrate how to create an advanced macros using the Sharp Task script. Sharp Task scripts are based on VBA programming languages and allows to pass custom arguments to a macros as well as create the advanced editor for the macro arguments and return the result of the operation. In this example I will create a script which will create snapshots for front, right and top views of all files in the folder. Let me do this manually for one file and record the macro of my actions. I need to start the macro recording and just set the front view and save this view into the PNG image. I'm going to change the name of my file to show the view orientation and I will repeat the same for top and right views. So when the steps are recorded, I just need to stop my macro and save it somewhere. I can copy the code from this macro. And create new text file, which will be my script. So I will just give it a name like a publisher and I need to specify the extension STS, which stands for Sharp task script, as you can see here. Now I'm dropping this script to Sharp task and just right mouse button and click Edit. This will open the editor for Sharp task scripts. I'm pasting my code here from the buffer and just quickly examine the script. So, as you can see, the macro recorded the full path to the image to be saved. And I can easily recognize the folder and the file name. What I want to do is to replace the folder with a placeholder called folder. You need to put them between the percentage signs and Sharp Task will recognize this as a special variable. So you can put the variable into this box here and just give it some name and type. So for example, I'm going to name it output folder. This will be shown to the user as well as a custom description. You can also select the type of editor for this variable from the available editors in the list. For this one, I'm going to select the folder browse, so user will have to select the folder using the browse button. Now I'm going to repeat similar steps uh, to modify my file name. So I'm selecting the file name and give it a new placeholder called name. Please note that I'm uh, leaving the front, top and right uh, portion of the names as they are. Similar to previously done steps, I'm going to describe my variable here. But for the editor type, I'm going to select the text with placeholder editor, so the user will be able to specify the name using the smart placeholders. You have some options here for your editor, so for example, uh, whether this is a file name or what placeholders are going to be shown to the user. So I just want to uh, select those placeholders and click OK. So let's save our script and see how it looks in Sharp Task. So I want to remove this script from here and just drag and drop the one which we just saved. When you select a task in the list, you can see the two arguments we just specified. Let's browse to our folder. So this is going to be our images folder. And let's just specify the file names and using the smart placeholder. So you just need to select the ones you want. So for example, Sadros model title. And this will be replaced dynamically to the title of your model which is currently opened. So I want to use similar to specify the configuration. And now I can just mix it with some custom text. So for example, just save it image. Uh, and it's done, I just need to drop the folder which I want to process. So this is my Salvers files in there. I can play around with the options. So for example, it's good to have a background mode disabled and run the macro for all configurations. Then I can specify the extensions for the files I want to process. Or you can use these uh, quick buttons and just click a run job. Sharp task will ask me whether I want to have a backup. So now you can see that uh, Sharp task is opening each file and runs this macro to output our images. So when the process is complete, you can see the results and whether all of this will process successfully. 
we can browse to a folder and we can see that all our images are here and you can know that the name is using the file name and configuration name as well as a, a custom text we'll put in our name box now let's do several changes in our macro the first change is to allow to specify the extension for the image so in addition to png image i want to be able to save to jpeg as well as tiff images I want to let my user browse from the available extensions. To do that, I'm going to create a variable and give it the option editor types. I need to specify the items I want to be available to my user. So just specify the extensions of the images. And I can also optionally specify the default value to be selected in my option box. The second enhancement I want to introduce into my script is the ability to group the images by project ID. So I'm going to introduce a variable called project ID to be a number. I would allow my project number to vary from 1 to 1000. And I need to change my output folder to include the project ID, like this. I also want to let my script create a folder if it does not exist. Fortunately, SharpTask provides a library of code snippets which are available from the context menu. I can select a snippet from the library, and this will bring the code into my macro. Finally, I need to call this function to create a folder if needed before images are saved. I need to specify the path to a folder I want to create. Similar to the save function, I can use the placeholders. I just copy that. And save my macro. Let's select a new version of the script and place it into the sharp task. And you can see now I have four options to select. Let's fill the arguments. I can just copy the path to a folder into here instead of browsing it. Let's select the project ID. So because this only allows numbers, you cannot put text in there. Just specify the file name. It is also possible to add the placeholder which will select the value of the custom property. So you just need to specify the custom property you are looking for and the value of this property will be placed into the file name. And finally, I need to select the type of my image and run job. As you can see, the folder is created and all the files are saved into the TIFF format. Thank you for watching this video.